Good morning. Pastor Ron called me this week and asked me if I could come to uh, preach for him. He, he didn't have to ask twice, okay? I, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Uh, I'm always excited to be among Royers Ford folks. I know how nice. While I know someone is thinking it, say that sort of thing out loud, you looked up at the title of the sermon, and it says, How to Worry. We don't need someone to ride up here and tell us how to worry. We've already got that one down, okay? Uh, COVID, uh, I certainly don't have to tell you uh, what, what that has meant. Uh, our, our national leaders don't seem to be able to agree on anything. Mm -hmm. Where's America going? Who knows? Um, will my child be able to go to school tomorrow? Or will they have quarantined the, the classroom? And if my child can't go to school, what, am I able to go to work? Uh, these are things that, that go on. Inflation is starting, and prices are creeping up. And if you're on a fixed income, uh, you are saying the prices are going up, but my income is things. Well, perhaps it would be better for us if we looked at a conversation that Jesus had about anxiety or about worry. Basically, what Jesus said is, you will be provided what you need. That's what he said. Now, he does not say, and I it's kind of significant to say that. He does not say, don't worry about things. It, that, that isn't exactly what he says. What he says is, you need to remember that you will be for. Look closely. What he's saying is, in this passage of scripture that was read for us, is God's going to take care of you. God's going to take care of you. That's what you need to think about. Now, if you look closely at this passage of scripture, you will see the word therefore appears three times, okay? It appears three times. Now, now those three times are, are like rungs on a ladder, okay? So you step on the first one, then you can go to the next one, and then you can go to the third one. So what we're going to do is climb these rungs one at a time and look at them. So the first rung on the ladder is, therefore, God, God values you. In with something that is always in the background of a discussion like this. I mean, we, we, you really can't even start to talk without knowing that this is in the background and, and reaffirming it and understanding it. Uh, we, have to, we have to remember Jesus himself. You have to start there, okay? God sent Jesus to die. He cares so deeply about what happens to human beings. And when you... What is God thinking? What is he talking about? What Jesus. If you ever start wondering how God feels, the answer to that question is the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. Now, let me say to you, if you have never considered Jesus, if you have never trusted him, if you have never become a follower of Jesus, uh, you need to know that God will provide for you. You, need, you can do that now. That's something you can do now, even right now while, while I'm talking. Uh, when you trust Jesus, he will take away your guilt. He will forgive your sins. He will forgive your sins and make you his child. That's what Jesus does. And 
Uh, if, if you are in that position this morning where you've never taken that step and you said right now, you know, I want to do that, let me show, assure you, this is one of the fun things about being able to talk about things like this. I can assure you, it's guaranteed, Jesus will not say no. I don't care how bad you are. I don't care where you come from. He will not say no. He has never said no to anyone who came to him and called on him knowing that they wanted his help, wanted his trust. So he's never said no to anyone who's asked for those things. That's very important. So if you have already done that, you're sitting here this morning as his child. You are his child. You need to remember that you are his child, and he cares about what happens to you even when you're unlovable. And let me tell you, you are unlovable at times, okay? But even when you are unlovable, God doesn't disown you. You are his. You are, he, he, he stays with you. He's going to claim you, okay? That's how it's going to be. So this first therefore, I, I share that because this, this verse first therefore rises out of that context of what I've just said. And, and that, that's, that's something that's all through the Bible, the, the significance of Jesus and how Jesus expresses what God thinks about us. The first therefore attaches to where you are on God's list of important things. Where are you on that list? Well, first of all, you yourself need to know that you can't have two most important things in your life. You can't have two most important things in your life. Now, th there's no doubt, you, you can't live without money. You can't do without it. I don't care how spiritual you are. You, know, you, you, got, you got to have money. I mean, you, you've, you've got to do that. Uh, you can't live without money. You can't do without it. But the problem you have, you, made, you need to make a decision. Which is more important, your need for money or your need for God? That's kind of the way Jesus sets it up here as you start to think about this. Which is more important, your need for money or your need for God? Now, the problem is, you and I know we're not naive. You can't survive without money. You can't survive without money. Money provides things like pot roast, sneakers, and a roof over your head. That's, that's, what, uh, that's what money does for you, okay? And you can't, you can't survive without that. But the question comes with them, which is the greatest need? What's the greatest need I have? Is it for that stuff that money will give me? Or is it for God? The first, therefore, calls you to remember that you need God. But you need to know how much God values you. And that's what he says here. God values you. God is a provider. Now, some common examples. Jesus gives common examples here. He provides for the birds. Okay? I mean, you, you probably drove here this morning and I, you passed birds. You may not even have noticed them. You know, they're doing all right. They're doing all right. Why? Because God provides for them. They don't have any money. They didn't have to stop at Wawa. They didn't have to, you know, they, they don't have any money. They're all right. He provides for the flowers. They don't even go to work. Whether, whether work is getting in the car and driving or sitting down at your desk at home, uh, they don't, flowers don't even go to work. And they look pretty nice. They look pretty nice. How do they get that way? Well, God provided for them. And you are much more important to God than they are. You're much more important than they are. If the birds and the flowers are okay because God provides, what about you? God thinks a whole lot more about you than he does about birds and flowers. He thinks a whole lot more. Uh, uh, you are extremely valuable. And again, I've, I've shared the, the, the foundational fact of that. Jesus came for you. Jesus came for you. So you are extremely valuable. So all that amounts to this. In some way, God is going to take care of you. In some way. We don't get specific details here, but, but that's not the point. That's not the point. 
this is certainly not a promise that God's going to make you rich and famous. You know, if you take it that way, you know, if I trust God, I'll be rich and famous and so on. No, you're going in the wrong direction. God is not that specific. He's not that specific, okay? God is saying that he will provide what you need. And you will need stuff. And God says, I will provide for you. So because God values you, when, when, when these problems rise, what he's saying is God's going to do something. Even if you don't know what it is, God's going to do something. Now, there are as many different needs in this room as there are people. You know, if we, if we went around and said, what, 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 what is your, your need this morning? You know, we, we would all give different answers. But God says, I, I, I take care of those needs. See, I take, he's not giving a, uh, you know, one size fits all here. What he's saying is I recognize that, that my children have needs. And my children are extremely valuable to me. And so I am going to look out for them. I am going to take care of them. Everyone who belongs to Jesus knows they are more important than birds and flowers to God. They're more important. And you need to know that when you're struggling. You need to know you are more important to, that, to, to God than birds and flowers. So that's, that's the first rung of the ladder, okay? Second rung. Therefore, God knows what you need. God is omniscient. I throw that in there. Uh, I graduated from seminary. And when, they, when you graduate from seminary, you make a promise to use big words, OK? And uh, uh, so omniscient is just a word of saying, God knows everything. God knows everything. That blows my mind. I don't know everything. And I don't know how he knows everything. But I know that he knows he knows everything because he is the sovereign creator and ruler of the universe. That's, that he, he made it all. He rules over all. And so he knows everything that goes on. You may be surprised. You uh, leave the church today and there may be some surprise waiting for you. But God is never surprised. Never surprised because he knows it all. He knows it all. Now, for the problem for people who do not understand this, they think that God has, uh, I, I don't know how to say it, maybe that God has a problem, that, that, that he's either inept or ignorant, okay? Uh, he, he doesn't really know what's going on. Because there's this temptation to think, if God really knew what I was going through, he would have taken care of it and I wouldn't be going through it, okay? I wouldn't be going through it. If God really knew that, uh, it, it, it would not be happening. So I need to tell him what's happening. I need to tell him what's going on in my life. But as we said, God is omniscient. There are no surprises to God. And he knows exactly, he knows exactly what's going on. Nothing escapes the attention of God. And at, at another place, another conversation about birds, Jesus said, Sparrow falls, I know it. I know it. Now, I, I've got birds around my house like you've got birds around your house, and every now and then there's a, a dead bird. Okay. Uh, but I don't know how it got there. And I, you know, it, 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 it just happens. And, uh, but God says, I know all those things. I know all those things. So there's, there's, no, there's no surprise. God knows all and sees all. He is that way. So what that means now, as we're standing on this second rung of the ladder, God knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly what you need. God knows what you need even better than you know what you need. Some people think that they need to bring God up to speed when they face a problem. God needs to know the details, so I'm going to fill him in. And so I'll, I'll pray and tell God what he doesn't know, okay? And, and, and sometimes in the process of telling God what he doesn't know, we tell him how he has to. 
doesn't need your help. And it doesn't, you don't have to tell him how to take care of you. The purpose of prayer is to express your dependence on God. That's why we pray. <laughs> why, else, why else would we tell God what our needs are if he already knows them? Because we're the ones that need to understand that God needs to know, God knows about what we're doing, and that's how we do it, through prayer. I express my dependence. God, I'm facing a problem. I can't deal with it. I'm bringing it before you because I know I can't deal with it, and I know you can, and I know that you know about it. So prayer begins with a recognition of our need, not the need to tell God what he doesn't know. It begins with a recognition. Prayer leads us to express and admit our dependence on God. Now, we're talking about you know, dealing with worry and anxiety. Prayer is the way we express what we're struggling with and take it before God. So prayer will help you to keep your focus where it needs to be in what we'll call the hard times. Prayer keeps you focused. What you face is significant. But as a matter of fact, there are bigger issues than what's happening to you. There are bigger issues. God is following an agenda. He, he, he does have an agenda. He identifies that agenda when he speaks of his kingdom. When, when you read about the kingdom of God, that, that ought to click in your mind and say, ah, God's got an agenda. He's doing something. He's got a plan. He's carrying that plan out. The kingdom is what God is doing. Now, the important thing for you to remember is that you are part of that plan. So when he talks about the kingdom, you are part of that. You are not the whole thing, obviously, but you are part of that. He includes you. You are his child. Now, the plan is bigger than you, but you're part of it. You're part of it. So focusing on that bigger picture can keep you from obsessing over the small details. Our days are filled with those details which take your attention. What are the things that you think about uh, when, you're, when your day starts? Where am I going to go? What am I going to do? Am I going to make it? Uh, am I going to have what I need? There's just, there's just a ton of details that creep into everyday life. Sometimes they're, they're, they're so common you, you don't even think about them. But you're dealing with details all day long. God says, I know those details. I know those details. You're part of my plan. So God says, I want you to stay focused on the agenda. So seek first. Make sure that you understand that God has an agenda. And then as you understand that God has an agenda, be sure you understand that you are part of that agenda, okay? You are part of that agenda. So that's the second rung uh, of the ladder. God, God uh, 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 is focused on his agenda and focused on you. Jesus, the third, therefore, the third rung on our ladder is, therefore, stay focused on reality. Stay focused on reality. Now, potentials belong to the world of tomorrow. The world of tomorrow is full of potentials. Now, potentials are things that might or might not happen. That's what potentials are. The problem with potentials is that you can never be sure. You can never be sure. So I can tell you that the potential exists that you're going to develop terminal cancer. Now, what's the problem here? You can't deny that. Potential for every one of us in this room. So you would be foolish to say, oh, I'll never have, potential. Uh, I'll never have terminal cancer. You can't say that. Uh, and you could lie awake at night wondering, will I get terminal cancer? You could lie awake and do that. That's, this is from the world of potentials, you see. It's from the world of potentials. And the problem with potentials 
is that you cannot deny the possibility because it's only a possibility. So anxiety is rooted in potentials. It's rooted in uh, potentials. It's what might happen that drives us crazy. <laughs> That's what drives us crazy. Sleep over something that never happened. You had symptoms. <gasps> I've got the COVID. And you go get the test. And it's negative. But I tell you what, if you had the symptoms, I'll bet your blood pressure went up. I, I, I bet you even may have lain awake at night. And you were so relieved when you got the test. But you see, it was a potential. You feared you were going to flunk the test. How many times have you faced something that, that was a potential? And, and, and you fretted over it, and you fussed over it, and it never happened. That's how it is with potentials. But the problem is, it could have happened. That COVID test, it could have been positive. It could have been positive. In your case, it came back negative. But you didn't know. Is it going to be positive? If it's positive, you know what I'm going to have to do? Oh, boy. Am I going to get sick? Am I going to wind up in the hospital? All of these are the kinds of things that run through the mind when we have potentials. That's why Jesus said, tomorrow carries its own worries. OK? Uh, tomorrow's got a set of worries. But they're about tomorrow. They're about tomorrow. They're the world of potentials. The world of potentials is tomorrow. So what he says is, put your focus on today's reality. Put your focus on today's reality. Today is full of reality. I don't know whether you're worried about whether you're going to get to church this morning or not, but you got here. Here you are, OK? Uh, here you are. It's full of reality. What you face today is real. It is not a potential. I, I have uh, listened to people. This, this is uh, more than one once, uh, you know, Person, person comes and they said, I, I just was at the doctor and I, I, I got this lump on my neck. And uh, I asked the doctor what it was and he said, mm, like doctors do, mm, okay. And what does mm, mean? And, and I, I, th I, think it, I think it might be cancer. And uh, uh, the doctor actually laid out some of the possibilities. And one of them was a very serious form of cancer that might be terminal. Who have just made their first visit to the doctor. That's the worst, worst time. And I've met people, they made their second visit to the doctor. And the doctor said, you have terminal cancer. It has always fascinated me. Nobody wants terminal cancer, but there's a kind of a relief in knowing what's happening. And I'd say, how could you be relieved to find out that you have terminal cancer? Well, now I know what the problem is. Now I know. It's, it's incredible. Potential became reality. Now, it's not a reality you wanted, but it became reality. It removed the potential. So reality is not the uncertainty of potential. Reality is reality. It is what is. It is what is. So God is the reality. When reality crashes over you like some giant ocean wave, two facts are really very important for you. And they're the first two rungs of this ladder we just stood on. You need to know those when reality crashes over you. First, you need to know that you are like a precious jewel to God. You are like a precious jewel. You are valued by God. So what you're facing is maybe miserable, but you need to know that you are valued to God. You are his child, and he cares deeply about what you face, and he cares deeply about how the struggle is affecting you. He cares about you. You are valuable to him. 
And no matter what happens, that doesn't change. That doesn't change. Second, God knows exactly what is going on, what you face, what you must deal with. There's no surprises with God. What is happening to you is not something that slipped through the cracks that God overlooked or that God missed somehow in his, in, in his busyness of running the universe. You didn't slip through the cracks. And what you're facing didn't slip through the cracks. In the calamities that make up reality, you can have confidence in your God for these reasons, for these reasons. Now, let's be clear. God does not promise that you will never face calamity. God does not promise that. We live in a broken world. Again, I don't need to tell you that. You know that. We live in a broken world. So there are things like hurricanes. There's cancer. There's COVID. There's automobile accidents. And there are empty bank accounts. This is a broken world. And those things are out there. And those things may have come to you. You may have already experienced some of them. What you know is that God knows and cares he knows and he cares. You don't know exactly how this calamity is going to affect you. You don't know exactly how you're going to deal with it. It's terrifying. It's frightening. But God says, I need you to remember that you are valuable to me. And I know exactly what's going on. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take care of you. So that's why Jesus says, do not be anxious, while at the same time saying, there are things out there that are going to creep up on you. Don't be anxious. God spoke some really beautiful and encouraging words. If you want to turn in your Bible to Isaiah chapter 43, uh, you, you, God says it so beautifully here. Isaiah chapter 43. Israel was being pounded. The nations around them were disrupting, carrying them around. Life was miserable for the Israelites. But God says in Isaiah 43, But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, who, he who formed you, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. I give men in return for you and peoples in exchange for you. Fear not, for I am with you. Isn't that wonderful and beautiful? When Jesus said, don't be anxious, he's building on the character and the nature and the desires and the care of God. So if they ask you, what did the preacher talk about today? You can say, he said, God said we can trust him. Let's pray. Thank you, O Lord. Uh, we face things that are scary. We face things that, that we don't even like to talk about. The potentials, well, they're potentials. But then there's the reality. And often reality hurts. Often reality makes us struggle. Often reality is, is, makes us think we're not going to make it. But, oh, Lord, you remind us. We are valuable to you like, like, like a precious jewel. We are valuable to you. And you know exactly what's going on. And you have said... Stay with me in the middle of reality. 
Thank you, O Lord, for the assurance and the promise of your faithful love. Thank you for Jesus, who is the guarantee that everything we've said this morning is absolutely true. Amen.